talking about Venezuela, Venezuelan and Cuban emigres in North America, well, you know, who are... Even, even Syrian, you know, pro-terrorist uh, Syrians, anti-Assadists. Uh, um, so like Syrians who serve the Zionist interests, for example, in yeah. Syria. And, and Iranians who do the same, you know? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I mean, that's, that's a good point. I mean, I think it's always a problem with these revolutions that emerge in the global south that you have the opponents of them ensconced in Harvard University, in California universities, in Princeton with perfect English who come on our media and they look like us, sound like us, act like us. And so they can ingratiate themselves with the audience much easier. Chavez was a peasant. He didn't speak English. He came from the working class, just like President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is uh, in Iran. He's uh, a man who comes from the, the lower class is in Iranian society and I mean you mentioned foreign policy I think this was one of Hugo Chavez's big crimes he sided with the Lebanese resistance he supported uh, Lebanon in its uh, attempts to extirpate Israel when it illegally invaded Lebanon in 2006 Chavez expelled the Israeli ambassador from uh, Venezuela and Canada turned over the Canadian embassy to become a de facto Israeli embassy Chavez offered citizenship to stateless Palestinians Chavez sided with Iranian self-determination and Iran's right to create a peaceful nuclear energy program. He supported Syria's uh, sovereignty and the uh, right of the Syrian state to uh, fight enemies foreign and domestic. And that was one of his big crimes. And it's very interesting after his death that the Zionists who are um, replete in Canada's media, Zionist journalists in Canada's media are attacking Chavez and calling him an anti-Semite and all the rest of it. And it's very funny because the neocon discourse, of course, is that uh, we should use U.S power or US power should be utilized to impose democracy and to promote democratization. But yet, when Hugo Chavez implemented a democratic revolution in Venezuela, and no one can dispute that he put himself to the electorate a dozen times, Jimmy Carter, who's not a well-known radical or revolutionary, Jimmy Carter, the former US president, his Carter Center evaluated and oversaw the elections in Venezuela. And he described it, I believe, as one of the best elections that he'd ever seen or the most perfect electoral processes that he'd ever viewed. And so you have the former US president calling a perfect electoral process a democratic revolution. And yet you have these neocons who claim they're against dictators, who claim they're for democratization, opposing and conspiring against the Bolivarian revolution. That indicates to me that these neocons, most of whom are hardcore supporters of the state of Israel, these neocons don't support democracy. They want slave governments. If it's a dictatorship like in Saudi Arabia, then so be it. And if it's a elected uh, slave governments, as is the case in Canada, then so be it too. Although our electoral process is uh, disputed, isn't it, Aaron? Because we had the election fraud scandal in 2011. So what's, what happens in our society is that st uh, stones are thrown in glass houses. We have election fraud in our society, and yet we throw stones at Venezuela, which has, according to the former US President Jimmy Carter, a perfect electoral system, the best he'd, his uh, entity had ever seen, the Carter Center. I think, isn't it a case of almost social Darwinism that us the white people must be perfect mm. our system must work we couldn't learn anything from those darkies in the global south mm. those brown skin people they couldn't do anything better than us but yet you and i are standing just in front of a bunch of oil oil skyscrapers here behind us and you're basically telling me Aaron, that we could learn something from hugo chavez we could learn something in our society where our oil resources our oil profits they don't go to schools and hospitals and university chavez created the fifth largest student body in the world the fifth largest whereas our students are now young people aren't going to university because they have to shoulder tens of thousands of dollars of debt. So our oil profits aren't being redistributed as is the case in Venezuela. 